Hi guys, today we're out after ash forks. We've got big ash forks, medium, normal size, small. What we're doing is we're having a drive round, getting as many as we can. We're out in the country. Uh, we're going to show you how to make them, how to steam them in, how to finish them, how to shoot them, and everything else like that. Uh, maybe some shooting, bit of a mooch. You're coming with us, so stay tuned. Let's go and find some fox. Got a nice big bird of prey up there. Oh, and off he goes. Common buzzard, I believe. What a lovely sight. What a lovely sight. Well, he's a lucky one. It's out of season. <laughs> See him in here. Where is he? Oh, he's just there, sat down in the edge. Just found one here. Needs a bit of steaming in. First ash fork, we just nip that off, we'll be taking that one over. Steam it in as soon as we get back, I'll show you how to do it. Nice fork to be honest that one. Let's check there ain't no more around here. As I say, it will go in. But I'm not going to force it till I've steamed it because once they're steamed, they'll go straight in. I'll show you how to do it. Right, we're struggling to find ash forks, the weather's a bit bad, but how about this for a view? We're in literally the middle of nowhere. Everywhere you can see is just hills and mountains. Look at that for a view. We've got a big dam there that we've got to go over, over the top of it. Looks absolutely lovely out here. Not many ash forks, we've got a couple. We've got a couple here now. Uh, a couple of nice ones. And we've got a mini one that we just cut. We haven't been out cutting them because the camera, um, the weather's a bit bad. And I don't really want to get this camera wet. We've got a few. We'll show you how to finish some of that after. But uh, we'll have a look at that dam in a minute. Don't know if that's a big freshwater lake or what, but it looks cool. The weather is absolutely terrible. Have a look at that for a lovely bit of valley and that. And this side, we got. Excuse the language. That wind's bad. Big reservoir in that here. I bet there's some carp in there. But a lovely view down that side as well. Struggling for these ash forks now. Right, we're having trouble finding the box driving round, so we've decided to pull up and have a couple of minutes on foot. I've just noticed we've got a dry fork there, and we've also got here an absolutely stunning ash fork in the middle. Can we just have a look in here? Oh, look at that little gem there. That will pull in lovely. So, without further ado, I'm going to take it in too. <laughs> I think there's another one at the top of it here as well. Uh, I recommend these snips for anybody as well. The Wilkinson Sword. Well, I had them from a shop called, what was it? Bevan's. Bevan's by me. And they make absolutely light work cutting forks. That's a fully sized fork with a lovely clean cut. But that will pull in. Absolute gem, that one. There's another little one at the top we're just going to take. Let's snip all the excess off. We'll say two down already. Well, that was a good move. Deciding to go on foot. Uh, the rain's only just stopped, so we've had a little mooch. We get in some. We get in there. It's coming together. We've got another little fork here. Again, trust the old Wilkinson snips. I don't think this is ash. This one, I ain't too sure what it is. But uh, either way, it's a gem of a little fork. And this little fork is coming with me. <laughs> coming close, but I'm showing you. Yeah, You're recording. Yeah. Mike, check one, two! <laughs> Cut! Take two. This is a tree. This is where you find the mini forks. If you come and have a close look in here, they're not quite thick enough yet, but this is where I've got a lot of my mini forks from. See that one there? Can you see that one? We got another one in here. Can you see that one? Uh, there's one here, which I'll be taking. We'll nip that off now. I'm just seeing that. Nice little mini look. But you get loads of minis around these part of the trees. I'm, I believe they're ash minis, I'm pretty sure they are. Now if you come around here, I dare say you'll find a load more. It's that type of tree. These little bushes I shoot up. There's another one there, we'll take that one. Nip it off. Another little mini ash fork. See if we can find another. I bet they're here. Or maybe not. <laughs> it's raining. We've got a few forks to show you how to finish the video, how to make them. We're going to wrap it up and get home. It's knocking on a bit now. Uh, we struggled for forks, but we got a couple, so it's all right. 
uh, pink chalk disc there, we'll smash that, then we'll get back home and show you what we've got. Oh, just up the tree underneath it. Boom, boom, boom. Right then, let's get back home and see what forks we've got. Right, we've just found this fell bush on the floor. It's already down, so the wood's dried. We've got one, two, we've got three forks here, all coming out the same wood. I've used this before, I can't quite think of what it is. I'm sure it's a type of ivy or something. Have a look at that for an absolutely perfect fork. We're going to be taking the three of these now and we'll call it the Ivy Trio. So without further ado, you can tell straight away because the uh, tree's already fell that uh, these are dried out properly, naturally, and uh, almost ready to work. And look at that, there's one from the bush. I'll just put that there for now. There's one here as well we're going to be taking. Another nice little fork, and then this one is also a little stunner. You can tell straight away when I'm cutting, see how the sawdust flying out? It's already dried out this one. So we've got three forks there, ready to work. But uh, you won't be seeing these in the ash fork video. We will be using these in another video. We're making the three together. But uh, yeah, three little gems off the same bush. Can't wait to finish them. Just found another little Mini Ash, look at that. She's coming home with Johnny Boy. Nice little gem there. Perfect little cup fork. We get that tied in and dried out. Right then, so we're back home now. We've got quite a few forks. We've steamed a couple, and I'm going to show you how to steam this one, or shall I say, heat it into position. Boiled in water. Put it in there, like so. So the steam and the heat coming off the water. Just make sure it's a little bit under there. And now what I'm going to do is leave that in, oh sugar that's a bit warm, I'm going to leave that in there now for about 15 to 20 me minutes till it's very warm and then we'll steam it into shape. Okay, so this has been soaking now, the water's just calling off me to put my hand in, it's been there about 15-20 minutes. Now what you'll see now is this bends almost like rubber. At that you'd never be able to bend it like that without it snapping before you can almost tie it in a knot and then you just need to seal it into position what I normally do is use cable ties but unfortunately I ain't got none left so the good old sellotape it is just sellotape it up a little bit bite it off and there is the ash fork now this is the part that most people get wrong because you can still bend, see how you can bend it all look, you can really bend this stuff round when it's heated up, look you can almost turn it round into a U so what you do is you get it exactly how you want it if it's bent a little bit that way, you can bend it out you sort of push them into shape now I'll leave that now in a warm place either on radiators on top of the boiler because it's only a thin fork probably a couple of week this one but it does vary when drying forks out depending on how thick they are and where you dry them out, obviously if you dry it out in a cold garage it's going to take a damn lot longer. So the drying process is very important, it must be dried properly, otherwise when you go to finish and make the forks, um, you know, you just the bark will start peeling off, it'll be soggy and damp inside, and it, it just won't be no good. So we've got a load of forks tied up from today, you've seen us cut them, so the next part of this video, which you'll see added on after this clip, will be in three weeks time. Okay, so we've harvested all these. Some are from this trip, some are from a different trip. We're going to randomly pick two now, uh, just to finish on the video. Making sure the dried out is key. We'll do a full size one and a mini one. Here's the full size one. This is how you check if they're dried out or not. Uh, a lot of people make mistakes. Once you cut this, if it springs out, it's no good. See, that has stayed exactly where it is. That is bone dry. Absolutely perfect. Now we're going to do a mini one again. Oh, we'll drop that one on the floor, we'll get that in a minute. Again, they haven't moved, that's proven the right. So we've got the two forks we want here, so let's grab all these. Can you see them on camera yet? When you mark them to shoot where you want them cut off, what I generally do as a roll of fun <laughs> with my fun is hold them, look like so. Mark them about half an inch above each grip, and again, about half an inch at the bottom. The mini ones you can't really hold them properly, they're more of a little gimmicky thing, so we just mark them 
in a nice straight line and there like so and then they're ready to be cut off following my marks always level them up later if they don't look right always take less than you need off at first as well because you can always cut a bit more off you can never add more on So now we've got two ash forks which have been fully seasoned and dried out and cut to size. Like I said, a lot of people rush the uh, seasoning process. They're a little bit overexcited for uh, premature making and um, I leave them still a bit wet and they spring about, they tend to split. We leave them seasoned for as long as they need to be till they're dry. Um, they take different times to season depending on thickness and where you keep them, but we only work with them when they're totally dry and ready. Uh, you can do many ways of finishing these, you can strip the bark off, you can carve into them, do what you want, but we believe a natural should be a natural as it is on the tree. The moment you start shaping it and cut, sticking bits on and adding stuff, it then don't become a natural in my eyes. Good old school natural is the way natural should be. Right, and what we do with the tips, is we will round the tips off. This is key to making sure that the bands fit right. So we'll say there's not an awful amount of work in these, it's keeping it as traditional as possible. We'll roll that over. And that tip is ready for sanding. Nice and rounded, and this is the same with this one. A little bit awkward doing it from the for the camera, so I'm used to having this on my lap when I do it. it makes it a bit more comfortable and sturdier to hold. Another thing we like to do, this bit in the middle here, make sure that matches in with the fork. Keep, keep rolling it round. And the idea is finish it so it's nice and even and smooth round the bit, but not do too much work on the fork. Otherwise, then you lose the character of the natural. If you see that, you can almost see the cups coming in. See that looking into it? Almost the perfect cup. And then a little bit on the bottom, make sure that's smooth. Just take the roughness off it. And of course, we always like to put our mark on the catapults. We always take a little bit off here. Again, this only works if the catapult's dried out properly. This is where the maker's mark will go. In my case, my signature. Right then, I've got the marks in for the maker's mark. Done the bits I want. The sanding process with bark on, you have to be really careful because you can damage the bark and take it off. The raw bits, where the barks come off, we use a thick sandpaper, same as in that little bit, just to take it off, same as the maker's mark, but then, with the bark on, you want a super fine paddle. So now they're all sanded to perfection, as you can see, we take a lot of time sanding, getting them finished. As I say, drying them out is essential, otherwise the bark will peel away, you'll have them moving, it's essential to have them dried out. We hand sign everything that we do. Every single thing we do we hand sign. Some small ones, some big ones. And these are ready for the finish we're going to apply now. We use a special finish, we're not telling anybody what it is, it's our secret finish we use on all our catapults. Um, gives a nice finish. You can see a nice protective shine. We use it on everything, then we'll get them banded up with a set of gamekeeper bands. Uh, you can use any finish you want, from oils to spray varnishes to whatever. Uh, and that's about it really, we get these banded up and show you. Here they are, you've seen me go out, cut them, 
bring them back, steam them into position, season them properly, not rushed anything, done it the right way, seasoned for a few weeks, cut after they've been steamed into place, sanded to perfection as you can see on the tips and stuff, just bring this camera down here, finished to a very good standard, very smooth around the tips and stuff, smooth in the cup, all the way down to the signature. This is how we finish all of ours, this sort of standard procedure to get a good finish on them. Um, absolutely spot on, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Fitted with a Gamekeeper hunting band set, this one. Sell them on eBay and the website, be sure to check them out. And a single one on this one. Again, finished to the same standard, absolute little gems. Uh, as I say, everything we do comes with my mark on. We wouldn't make it if we didn't put the mark on. So uh, yeah, don't forget, give the video a thumbs up, give it a like, give it a share, uh, watch it again in your underwear, do what you got to do. <laughs> but um, yeah, this one's been steamed into the perfect cup, as you could see. They're done the right way, we don't rush and we make sure we cut them, proper ash, they get steamed, perfect. As I say, they get seasoned, so they're set, they're not rushed, they're dried out. Then the sand to perfection in the bits we get the cup absolutely spot on in them. See it's a perfect U almost, or as good as we can get it. Some forks are different than others, some are better, some are worse for the cup. We do the best we can. Another little cup there. You know these little ones, they don't half shoot good as well, you know. You can wrap two fingers around the handle and there and there and you got it. This one, let me just swap hands with the camera. It's this one. So it does shoot both hands, it seems to lock nicer in the right though. As you can see, look at that for a fit there. And that, what an absolute gem of a fork that is. You know, you've got to feel on to appreciate the finish on it. It's hard to tell on a video sometimes, especially now the lighting's gone. And as I say, yeah, give us a thumbs up, a like and a share. Uh, we do some more how to videos soon. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video, plenty more to come. Like, rate, subscribe, and don't forget, have fun. Make yourself some catapults, step by step here. Uh, don't be fooled by some of the stuff you see where people cutting them off of the tree, they're banding them up the next day, they're still damp underneath, the tips are rough, because uh, to the first glance at the picture they would look the same, but there's actually there's not a lot of work goes into them, it's the process that making them that makes them what they are, the way they're steamed, the way they're dried out, properly finished, the proper finish. Um, but yeah, that's it, share it, like it, love it, catch you all soon in the next one, all the best.